Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the last video in our How to Play series on the Pan-Asian Destroyer line. This is the Tier 10 Ue Yang, or at least that's how I think it's pronounced. There's not too many good sources out there on how it's pronounced. Found one that showed that, and I, I think it's right. Ue Yang. Uh, someone correct me in the in the comments if that is wrong and do your best to try and help me out here. Uh, but, uh, the, uh, Ue Yang is actually the former Allen M. Sumner class destroyer of the USS Hainsworth. That's destroyer hole number 700. So DD 700. She was transferred to the Republic of China Navy, which is Taiwan in 1970, where she served until 1999. Because we don't have an, another Allen M. Sumner class ship in the game to talk about, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, the design history of the Allen M. Sumners. Uh, I think it's kind of important to note that uh, the Allen M. Sumner class was an improvement upon the preceding Fletcher class destroyers in a few notable ways. While the hull form itself, that meaning the shape of the hull itself, was nearly identical to the flat, that of the Fletchers, in fact, it's only about 15 inches wider and 15 inches deeper than the uh, Fletchers, the Allen and Sumners uh, were actually, uh, they, they boasted a, a dual rudder setup, which was a change from the Fletcher's single rudder. In fact, there was a running joke in the U.S. Navy with the Fletchers that and the Iowa class that the Iowa class could actually outturn a Fletcher class destroyer. And that's actually based in truth. There was a study done, and that's part of one of the changes that was done to the Allen M. Sumner classes. One other significant change was a change away from five single 5-inch 38 gun mounts to three twin 5-inch 38 gun mounts. And with those changes, this ship would actually serve as the basis for the gearing class that would follow. But there were also some changes there to the overall hull form there, the shape of the hull, to uh, improve sea keeping abilities on the gearings. So the Allen M. Sumners, you can basically call them a Fletcher, but with the 5-inch 38 dual mounts instead of the singles. In fact, if we compare Chung Mu, which is a Fletcher, to Ue Young, you can see... Basically, no difference in the, the holes of these two ships. They're pretty much the same. Uh, again, really only 15 inches that differentiates the two. The Autumn Sumners, uh, like most destroyers during World War II, had a pretty heavy AA complement. And that only got more ridiculous as the time went on. So obviously the change in adding an additional 5-inch 38 gun mount was a help. Uh, or sorry, just a 5-inch 38 barrel in, in a, you know, twin mounts now instead of single mounts, actually helped with the anti-aircraft fire quite a lot. You had one more of those. They actually had um, a lot more 20mm and 40mm guns than the Fletchers did because the change in the internal structure of the ship to support only three turrets actually made the ship lighter because they didn't have to have as much structural rigidity holding it together because we have fewer mounts. Uh, they were actually did, able to use that weight to increase the number of anti-aircraft guns on it. So not only did the ship have better AA in the sense that it had more 5-inch 38 guns on board, it actually had better AA because it was actually a lighter hull because of the change in gun configuration. And so it actually had quite a healthy anti-aircraft complement on it. Like most U.S. destroyers during World War II, the de-emphasis on torpedo armaments and the threat of kamikazes meant that the Allen M. Sumners, like the Fletchers, had most of them had their rear torpedo tube uh, set up removed and replaced with two additional quadruple 40 millimeter gun mounts, similar to what we see the USS Kidd has in the game. And uh, thankfully, we don't have that problem on Ue Young because that would be ridiculous. Um, this ship is very ridiculous to begin with, but we'll talk about that in a minute. In terms of service history, just real briefly, the USS Hainsworth served at the U.S. Navy in, uh, from 1944 until May 12th, 1970, when she was sold to the Republic of China, Taiwan Navy. She would serve with them until January 6th, 1999 where she would uh, then be sunk as an artificial reef on October 13th, 2001. Uh, did see some service in World War II, participated in a couple of notable um, engagements in Okinawa, uh, but uh, 
overall, pretty much your standard affair for destroyers. So a lot of use, uh, not a whole lot of accolades for their service, and not a whole lot of information on what she did in the Taiwan, the Republic of China's Navy. Um, but it, it's interesting that this ship was still in service in 1999. I mean, I, I think the vast majority of people playing this game were alive in 1999. Um Many of us were probably old enough to actually remember 1999 in the turn of the century or millennia. Well, I guess both. <laughs> so it's interesting to me that like this was a ship that not only could have we gone and seen it and touched it, it would still have actually been in military service at the time. Anyway, let's talk about the ship in game. Ue Yang shall forever be known as the Great Usurper in my books. This ship took the title for the king of contesting caps away from the gearing for much the same reasons why Chung Mu is such a strong ship compared to Fletcher. Basically, what downsides this ship have don't outweigh the strengths that it has. So let's talk about the strengths. It has a better concealment than gearing. Okay, it's only a hundred meters or a tenth of a kilometer, but... <laughs> That, you know, that that does kind of matter because you can really play a tenth of a kilometer. I mean, look at my Chung Mu video in which I kept a Shimikaze lit up with only a hundred meter uh, difference in the detection range there. So basically the same concealment, you know, at 5.8 kilometers, Chung Mu to is 5.7. You know, we're only gaining a tenth of a kilometer, but we're gaining an additional barrel. So we now have six barrels instead of five. We still have deep water torpedoes. We still have very healthy AA. We still have... It's slightly better turning radius. It's 20 meters tighter. The rudder shift time is slower, but I think that's because of the way I have the ship set up. Uh, 3.1 seconds versus 2.6, I think, on the gearing. But I think my gearing captain ha or my uh, gearing sh has the rudder shift upgrade mounted on it instead of the engine propulsion upgrade. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then uh, half a, a knot in max speed difference. So not exactly a huge difference in maneuverability. However, uh, at 3.1 seconds to rudder shift time, Ue Young actually feels way more maneuverable because at minimal rudder inputs, the ship changes directions fairly quickly and easily. You can't say the same thing about gearing. Gearing feels an awful lot like Z-52, in my opinion. It's very sluggish at the helm, and it doesn't really in doesn't really feel very good to me. But that's just me. Uh, the smoke consumable is way better. Um, it doesn't last as long, however. Uh, it, it The ability for you to, within 10 seconds, deploy another smoke cloud after your last cloud has finished is extremely powerful. Uh, it also has a thinner overall profile than gearing, which means that the ship is less likely to eat AP shell normal penetrations, which means she takes less damage from battleships. And um, yeah, I think I would gladly trade those things and all things considered for, you know, defensive fire. Gearing can keep defensive fire. It's really not that big of a deal to me. Um, oh, yeah. One other thing. Ue Young also has a lower hull profile. The ship sits lower in the water than gearing does. Let's see if I can't bring up gearing real quick just to show you. Just get a good mental image in your head here while I get ready to pull it up. And there's gearing. Way taller in the water, in my opinion. So we'll switch back to Ue Young. And you can see here, it sits way lower in the water. Um, and that actually helps out quite a lot, too. You're less likely to eat normal penetrations because you're less likely to have the whole of your ship hit, mostly superstructure. Torpedoes. Let's talk about those torpedoes. Uh, basically, it's the same torpedo as gearing in terms of damage. There are some notable differences, obviously being deep water torpedoes. They can't hit destroyers. However, uh, they have a 0 0.8 kilometer detection range. Same 17,900 damage, 13 and a half kilometers and 68 knots. So if you're like me and you run torpedo acceleration on your gearing, that gives you 13.2 kilometer range and 71 knot speed. This is three knots slower, but three tenths of a kilometer longer ranged. Oh yeah, by the way, basically half of the detection cut off. Yeah, I would much rather have Ueyang's torpedoes 
over the gearings torpedoes any day of the week. Three knots in torpedo speed doesn't make that big of a difference. So overall, this ship is extremely strong. It is quickly becoming my favorite tier 10 destroyer. I mean, it's a usurp not only gearing but shimikaze uh shimikaze in the the role of my favorite tier 10 destroyer uh gearing from the cap contesting it's just crazy plus the ship also gets access to the radar consumable and we'll talk about that as we go further into uh, the ship so let's talk about stats this ship has 22,000 hit points that is going to be with survivability expert on the captain by the way, Captain Video is a separate video at the beginning of this playlist. Check out the channel. There, uh, the video is there on the channel. Uh, throw up to 20 millimeters of armor. And it, again, really not enough there to, to actually do anything useful with. Uh, main battery consists of three dual 5-inch 38 cal Mark 38 guns. They have a 3-second reload time, 7.2 second, 180-degree turn time, 97-meter dispersion, 7% fire chance, which I think is actually higher than gearings some for some odd reason yeah so that's five percent that this has one of the fire flags on there so just by going to the pan asian destroyer line we get a seven percent fire chance oh i have demo expert on here what 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 that's why seven percent fire chance 2100 ap shell damage 1800 HE shell damage, same muzzle velocity at just shy of 18, uh, 800 meters per second, and 11.9 kilometer firing range. A little bit longer firing range than gearing, but not by a whole lot. It's just enough to be just comfortable. Could use 12.9K. Uh, that's basically what Fletcher has. That would be useful too. But hey, it is what it is. Torpedo tubes, two quintuple torpedo tubes. Again, uh, 17,900. Damage, 13.5 kilometer range, 0.8 kilometer detection range. Um, basically, minute 44 second reload time. That's going to be in a full-on torpedo build. 6 second 180 degree turn time on those torpedoes. 68 knots. That's how fast they go. Any aircraft defense, 10 single 20 millimeter Orlikans, 2 dual 40 millimeter Bofors, 2 quad 40 millimeter Bofors, and then the 3 dual 5 inch 38s. You're looking at 5K, stepping down to 3.5K, then to 2K. Pretty standard U.S. anti-aircraft suite ranges. It's going to be without advanced firing training, without the AA range increase modules on the ship. Maneuverability, 36.5 knots, 620 meter turning circle radius, 3.1 second rudder shift time. Uh, like I said, compared to gearing, it feels like that 3.1 second, even though it's half second slower, uh... It feels like the ship changes directions more willingly than gearing does. 5.8 kilometer detection range by sea, 3.4 kilometer detection range by air. Let's talk about upgrades. In the first upgrade slot, I am running Main Armaments Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes being incapacitated, as well as a 50% increase in their hit points and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them if they do get incapacitated. The only other upgrade at this tier that I would run is Magazine Mod 1 for the 70% reduction in the risk of your ship's magazine getting detonated. In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the risk of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair your engine. Uh, the only other one at this tier that I'd recommend for normal upgrades is the Steering Gears Mod 1. And it's the same as Propulsion Mod 1, but for your steering gears. Of the two, it kind of comes down to personal preference of what you hate losing more. I hate losing my engines more than I hate losing my rudder. With Last Stand, it's better to crawl away and have worse maneuverability than it is to only be able to go like 20 knots crawling away. So... Of these two, I prefer Propulsion Mod 1. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of the main battery, as well as a 20% increase at the speed at which your torpedo tubes traverse. You could also run AA Guns Mod 2 here. However, like Chung Mu, this ship's lack of defensive fire means that a full AA build on this ship really isn't that useful. Also, carriers at Tier 10 aren't very common, and... I just don't think it's really necessary. 
Uh, main battery mod 2, the turrets turn stupid fast. There's no reason to take a penalty to the loading time, no matter how small it is, to get the, the faster turrets because they already turn really fast. In the fourth slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 2 for the increase in engine power when the ship first starts moving, as well as a 50% reduction in the time it takes to reach full power when accelerating. This is only going to affect the ship in that negative 6 to 6 knot range, but when you're camping in smoke, this can allow you to quickly accelerate and get out of incoming torpedoes, so this is very useful. You could also run Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time, but... As we kind of talked about, I, I really don't see dropping the rudder shift by, you know, six tenths of a second to really be all that useful. Um, the ship is plenty maneuverable as is. In the fifth slot, there is nothing else that I would recommend running here but Concealment Systems Mod 1. This is the 10% reduction in the detection range of your ship. It's what allows you to get to 5.8 kilometers in detection range. That and Concealment Expert together on the Concealment Expert on the Captain together make uh, make for the ship to be very potent. It also has the fi the added benefit of 5% to the dispersion of shells fired at you by enemies. So um, increasing or decreasing their accuracy, increasing their dispersion. In the last slot, I am running Torpedo Tubes Mod 3 for the 15% reduction in the reload time of the torpedoes. This comes with the added downside of a 50% increase in the risk of the torpedo tubes being incapacitated. With preventative maintenance and main armaments mod 1, that 50% kind of, you know, evens out. It doesn't really come out to be 50%. Um, it ends up only being like 10% or so, and it's really not noticeable. So well worth it for the reduction in the uh, reload time of your torpedoes. Uh, other mods at this tier that you could run, if you were going to set the ship up in full AA configuration, AA Guns Mod 3 is there for a 25% increase in the DPS of the AA gun mounts. Of course, without defensive fire, I really don't think Ue Young is really that useful as an anti-aircraft destroyer. Uh, adding 16% to the main battery firing range, I could see a good case being made for this. However, this ship's primary strength is in its torpedoes, so decreasing the time it takes to reload torpedoes is more important to me. Uh, plus 16% to 12, basically 12 kilometers, I, I don't even know what that comes out to be. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like it would be worth it to me. And main battery mod 3, you know, 12% reduction of the main battery reloading time. You're only going to drop about 3 tenths, 4 tenths of a second on the reload. Uh, Adrenaline Rush will accomplish the same goal. Um, and I, I really don't see this as being overly necessary. Of course, this also hurts the speed at which your, tor your uh, turrets traverse. It's not really going to be enough to notice the turrets turn really quick to begin with. So... Of these, I recommend Torpedo Tubes Mod 3. In terms of consumables, the only thing that's really notable here is that we do have access to surveillance radar. 7.5 kilometer, it's 20 seconds in uh, activation time. Uh, you could boost this if you had the radar module, but at 7.5 kilometers, yeah, you're probably detecting most ships anyway or are charging towards them. I could see this being useful if you were trying to deal with the pesky German destroyer, because, you know, Hydro. Um, that would be useful. However, the smoke generator being as powerful as it is, the fact that it only takes 10 seconds from the time your smoke completely dissipates before you can deploy another one just allows you to sit and smoke that much longer. And that is, in my opinion, far more useful. So, enough of talking about the ship in port, let's go look at it in a battle video. Alright, so, being as we are a tier 10, we get all sorts of preferential matchmaking. We will always be top tier. This match has a Shimakaze, Grozovoy, another Ueyang, and a Fletcher in it as far as those go. Radar, their team has, well, only the potential for one, but it's really unlikely that the Minotaur is running a radar. So that's always a bonus. We have at least one on our team. It looks like one. So we have the radar advantage. But uh, what's interesting is this is an interesting map. So this is Atlantic. This is standard battle Atlantic. Kind of a rare form of this map. I don't think I've played this form of the map 
in a long time. I don't know if that's a recent change by Wargaming or not, but uh, usually this map is a three-cap mode, and I don't know, personally... On this map, it's kind of hard to really pick one way to go, especially since it's a standard battle instead of domination. We don't have to worry about capping points. However, there is almost always some form of contention over the middle area amongst destroyers. So if I could get some help from the Hsien Yang, um, that would be awesome. Or maybe the Gearings, plural, because all we have are gunboats on this team. There are no torpedo boats allowed on this team. I mean, aside from the Pan-Asian destroyer. Well, I guess, you know, if you're one of those salty IJ and DD players, the gearing is the best tier 10 uh, torpedo boat by a long shot. Of course, not to mention this ship, which has, in my opinion, better torpedoes. Um, in fact, this would be the only ship that I would say has a much better chance of being a better torpedo boat than Shimikaze. But there's that pesky problem of 15 torpedoes versus 10, and that problem is oftentimes hard to overcome, given that the average damage potential between the two is, <clears throat> well, it's about two torpedoes worth. So I'd have to land two additional torpedoes in Ueyang to actually get um, the same damage as a Shimakaze over the course of 20 minute match. Anyway, I have a whole video talking about Japanese torpedo um, balancing, we really don't need to rehash this. So let's look at things that we can do. So that is a Friedrich de Gross, and um, there is a North Carolina over there. Our torpedoes are about to be up. Uh, you know, we've got things that we can do. There's a Shimikaze in the way, though. How dare he? Well, Shimikaze at this range uh, against the gearing really isn't much of a threat. Um, especially when he aims like that, and it doesn't seem like there's much in the way of, uh, you know, destroyers there. So quick pop off of our, of our torpedo tubes. We've kind of overextended ourselves, but the ships that are shooting at us, well, um, really not too much of a concern. We're just going to turn away WASD. We're going to save the smoke consumable because WASD is really working out quite well here. Look at how many shells are fired at me and how many of them miss. Like, there was the first hit in a long time, and it did next to no damage. And lots of other ships shooting at me. Oop, there was a couple more hits there. Not a whole lot of damage taken. There was a lot of shells fired at us. Holy cow. Okay, well, torpedoes are looking pretty good on that Friedrich. Der Gross, uh, maybe a little under lead, but eh, overall, you never know. It doesn't look like he's turning away. I don't think he thinks they're going to quite get to him. I, I personally, at this point in time, I'm not sure they're going to get there either. But you, you, know, you never know. 13 and a half kilometers is quite a long way for torpedoes. Oh. Mm. We're going to get at least one out of this, I think. Now, got to be careful in this view because we, we can't see him and we're close to Shimika. Oh, we got one torpedo hit and they ran out of steam. So I don't know if we would have gotten multiple torpedo hits or what, but uh, well, it kind of doesn't matter at this point. So with the smoke here, we're going to kind of abuse some spotting mechanics. Just thinking about slowing down, maybe deploying smoke. Yeah, we'll do. We'll go ahead and deploy our smoke. We got ourselves a North Carolina here. I'm detected. Oh darn! Quickly disappear, and we're going to get to see what seven. Uh oh, I'm detected by radar. Hydro radar. Launching a set of torpedoes, and these destroyers are only making me reload quicker. I don't think they know that. <laughs> if they do, they're not doing a very good job with it, but that North Carolina is on fire in two different places. One of those fires is not mine. They just repaired it. I think one of those fires was mine. Up to 36,941 damage. We're just going to keep plinking away at the North Carolina here. He's in range. We have torpedoes on the way. It looks like the Hsien Yang has uh, got torpedoes on the way too, so this could be a very bad scenario for that North Carolina if all of the torpedoes make it there. And depends on how he turns. If he turns into them, then I'm going to be very happy because he's going to eat a lot of torpedoes, but he eats two from the Hsien Yang. And it looks, I can't tell if he's flooding or not, uh, but I think we're going to get one here. Yep. 
probably would have gotten two there had he lived through those, maybe even three. So we get our first blood five minutes into this match. 44,863 damage, but I'm not done yet. So one other thing that you see me doing is our team is heavily concentrated to the south. Uh, their team is kind of death balled up in this area on the other side of this island to my left. And so I really want to be able to launch torpedoes in that general direction. So we're going to move ourselves into position to do exactly that. We got uh, the Hsien Yang is there, so that always helps. We've got smoke. Our torpedoes are almost up. We just have a lot of options here that we can really pursue. Um, and in terms of capabilities, you know, I, I think I think we're going to try and go after this Alabama if we can. If we can get close enough to him. we got to be careful with the St. Louis. But I think if we can get in there, I think we can get him. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> we kind of need him to start turning or something. Grosser Kerfurst is there. This St. Louis is coming in. He's turning awfully hard. So we're going to launch a set short, and then we're going to launch a set way long. And then we're going to, well, we're going to sit here, and why not? Let's deploy some smoke. Well, maybe. We're going to get a little bit further away from him first. There's the smoke deployment. We're going to go ahead and shoot our guns at him. And, uh, you know, we're just we're going to use the guns until we can get some... Uh, he's relatively soft, so we're going to get some damage from it. We're going to switch to AP. Oh, there's a torpedo hit. Okay. No citadels. That spaced armor is doing its job, but we're doing some decent damage here. He, he popped his hydro, but it's not going to be enough. And down he goes. Oh, took 231 damage from a random secondary hit. That's perfectly fine by me. Not really a whole... What? <laughs> Grosser Curve first? Is, he's in... He's, hey, he's within HE range. we got plenty of time left in our smoke. No reason to get super excited about jumping out of it, but look at this. Is that another torpedo, an unintended consequence? It is. So we are now up to 84,000 damage and two kills. But I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, this ship is so capable of these games, it really is frightening. That's why when people say, oh, well, you know, I think X or Y is a better boat. Well, there are some advantages to this ship, and... Uh, while Shimikaze has 15 torpedoes, I think this is probably the best case for, you know, buffs to said Shimikaze, but I really don't think that Shimikaze needs a buff either. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, not exactly popular. Already, why do I keep talking about Shimikaze? Well, probably has something to do with the fact that a lot of people really, really, really want Shimikaze to be way more powerful than it probably should be. So, demonstrating our ability to deploy smoke, our engine control there, slowing us down ridiculously fast. Uh, this grosser curve first, you know, we're backing up. Oh, there's a fire. So we know we got a flood on him. Ooh, nice shot. We know he has at least one flood on him. We launched one set kind of short, one set kind of long. Purpose being, uh, we're not sure exactly what direction he's going to go. I, I'm guessing he's going to turn out in a way. That's what he's doing. Quick switch to AP there to see if I can't do some more damage. Look, he's turning away. Um, not really that reliable in doing damage. And this is one thing I don't like about the US 5-inch guns. They, they have very low alpha uh, even the AP at these longer ranges is nearly useless. <clears throat> you can see here it looks like we're going to basically miss Mr. Battleship 1960, so we're going to switch to HE. We're going to engage him as long as we possibly can. We're over the 100k mark. Heck, we're deep into the 120k mark at this point. Uh, just now getting ready to cross over into that threshold. Oh, for Pete's sakes, get there. <laughs> 118,970. We got four torpedoes and four floods. Uh, there we go. Finally crossed over the, the 200k mark. So we're going to we're gonna bust out of the smoke. Just going to keep engaging him, because at this point, not really a whole lot in the way of destroyers that are going to get in the way. Not really a whole lot in the way of anything to really get in the way at this point. I was going to see if I couldn't kill secure that Prince Eugen if he... Uh, got around the edge of the map there, but he bailed out so long ago, that's not an issue. 
121,049 damage. Two kills. First blood. Our Xian Yang is there dealing with the Friedrich der Gross who is running away. Well, actually, this is a different, uh, different German battleship. So we had a couple of different ways that we could have gone from here. I opted to try and go help our Yamato and at least block off the cap because in terms of actual points, you know, we've got three people at their cap. We've got a, a run that is uh, headed towards their cap. And really only Yamato to deal with an Alabama, a Minotaur, a Gorozovoy, and a Uweyong. So, yeah. Well, we'll throw some torpedoes at Alabama, but uh, we're just going to keep on chugging over here to try and, and help out Yamato because, let's face it, he's very important to this battle in the sense that we need him to stay alive. If we can, otherwise uh, this could be kind of frustrating to deal with a Minotaur without him. So we're going to go help him. We got our speed boost active. It's our last speed boost. Trying to get over there as quickly as possible. 121,049 damage, two kills, 231 shell hits, four fires, four torpedo hits. It doesn't look like we're going to hit the Alabama. He, you can see he's turning away. Uh, Friedrich der Gross goes down to Wise Dragon, another STW member. But we are headed off to go find friends. Oh, you know, there's a Shimakaze over somewhere around here, too. That's one ship that would be nice to know where it's at. And yes, good game to everyone. We are well ahead on the cap points here with the uh, Sian Yang being... Oh, okay, so there's the Yang. Yeah, Ue Young there. Uh, Alabama still going away. There's a Minotaur somewhere around here. Where is the big surprise? <laughs> but uh, we're just going to keep buzzing on south here. Maybe we'll find our Grozovoy or the Shimikaze. Make sure they don't get to our cap. Oh, detected. Shimikaze torpedoes and a Shimikaze. A little bit of a tweak i guess you could call that uh being as we're detected you know i'm, I'm doing my usual thing we're, we're we're messing with the throttle i'm turning to engage him the the minotaur pops up and it's a good thing that i decided to turn this direction because uh it allows me to have escaped to to escape this nonsense uh okay so we killed the the shimikaze nobody's terribly surprised by that we're gonna pop our smoke and whoop, ninja vanish mode and then the game ends. Ah, so we finished the game with one hundred thirty thousand six hundred. Nope, one hundred thirty. Yeah, basically one hundred thirty thousand six hundred damage. Three kills. One thousand nine hundred sixty-three damage. Four fires. Four torpedo hits. Sorry, five fires. Four torpedo hits. There's the credits and XP screen. Anyway, Ue Young is a fantastic tier 10 destroyer. Really caps off the play style of the Pan-Asian destroyers with a very well-rounded ship overall. I love it. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.